So what I'll do is in this window here, I'll go into sources BLFS and there's all our packages we've done so far. And then I can copy and paste from the text browser in this window. So if I go to read online and go to the book, yep, there you go. So I'll I'll be working like like this now. So um, so let's make a start. Uh, we can get rid of some of these tabs. Don't need the drivers anymore. And we want to go to the browsers. which is section 40. So if I find section 40 in this window, okay. Yeah. Uh, so the, I've looked at these and I think on balance, I've done C monkey last time but that was, I was doing that differently. I wasn't trying to build every single package under the sun. I wasn't trying to do documentation or anything like that. And even then that was quite onerous. But I've looked at these and I think um, Falcon's going to be the one that I'm going to go for. Um, I think I can get away with um, building this in just a few packages. Um, probably about, I don't know, three or four, I think. So, hopefully, we can um, have a browser within a couple of, well, two or three hours, maybe, uh, of, of building this. So, if I get this up on this window here, which is easy to read, obviously, um, it says it's uh, part of KDE now, but it can, be, can be installed without KDE, which is a good thing, because KDE itself is a, a load of libraries in its own right. So the fact that we can build it separately or virtually separately is, is a real boon. So there's a few packages we need here, um, two required packages and some optional ones. So the key ring definitely don't need at the moment. Although when we come back around, I'll rebuild this again when, when we've got these uh, options and the KDE frameworks, like I say, is a whole suite of packages in itself so we definitely don't don't need them or won't be doing them so let's get these two up extra cmake modules we've already got cmake installed although it's not installed completely with all the options um, we have got it and it will run uh, so that's not a problem qt web engines like the core um, web engine part of it that I, I believe a lot of browsers use these days and this is one of the problems that you can't get away from having one of these big engines uh, installed now. Uh, we've got NSS we've already installed. It's one of the security packages, so we don't need that. Python 2 we've got installed. Q2 we need to install. So this is like a graphical language, graphical as a, a application framework. Um, and this is quite a big package as well. You can see it's half gigabyte download. Uh, so we need this and this needs Axel libraries as a requirement. Then there's loads of recommendations. Now, we don't normally need any of these, but there's one where we have actually got some installed. We've got, we haven't got PCRE2, so that's not really a problem. Um, but we've got SQLite, Wayland, and we've got Mesa built with the Wayland backend, and we've got all these XCB libraries because they were part of the Xorg installation. We've got ICU, we've got GLibs, so we've got some of these, we've got Make CA even as well. What we haven't got is the uh, like the multimedia stuff. So Alsa is to do is sound, Cups is printing, GST is to do is sound, Half Buzz is to do font rendering, don't know what Jasper is, LibJPEG is to do with images, LibMNGs, movies, PNG, I think we've got the PNG installed, haven't got TIFF, WebP, I think, is a movie format. 
Now, one thing, one I am concerned about is this lib xkb common. I think we need, we'll need to install that. It, although these are only recommended, sometimes the recommendation is that you need it for a certain package, and this is to do with, I think it's keyboards. Yeah, key, key map compiler. Um, so, because it's not kind of like a multimedia type thing, and we haven't installed it, I'm worried that we might actually need that. MT dev, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, let's do a display multi touch, so we don't need that at all. So, I'm going to install this. I'm, I'm sure in the past I've had problems and there was a one package. This is why this lib xkb common is sort of ringing bells in my mind. So, I'm going to install that and hope that that fulfills um, enough of the recommended for now. And as I say, this is another package I'll come back and reinstall. Um, in fact, I'll make a note of it now. Because uh, there is lots more to install and it'll just enable more functionality for you know, maybe some other packages. And it could be these, these packages are recommended because certain packages need them. Um, generally, it says things like it says here for Mesa must be built with the Wayland backend where it is a requirement. Um, whereas if you went to me, you might say, you know, Wayland's an option. So, uh, all right, let's just make this rebuild QT. Uh, probably before KDE actually, because KDE uses this. So, let's just put that in. Right. So, yeah, I'm going to start with this libxk common. I don't think it's a big package, so it won't take too long. Yeah, it's less than 0.1 of an SBU, so it's a tiny package. Right, X keyboard config is a requirement. I think that's one of the XORG libraries, so let me check that. X keyboard config. Yes, it is. So we've we've already got that installed. Um, we've got these two recommended ones installed as well. Lib xcb. Where's that? I think we've got that one installed. Right. Best way to check is to open it up. Yeah, chapter twenty-four. Lib. But I can't see it unless it's called just xcb on here. Lib. Oh yes, there it is, yeah, underneath XCB Proto. Yeah, so we've got that one installed. And I'm pretty sure we did Wayland, because there was Wayland and Wayland Protocols. So this is section 9. Yeah, and that, so they're installed, so that's that's good. Optional Doxygen, we haven't got that installed. So let's make a note of LibXB XKB common to install after Doxygen. Lib xkb common after doxygen. So there's lots of packages I've got here now. It's probably 30 or so, I think. And a lot of them just need this doxygen because I was going to build the API for all the documentation. I think it's API documentation for most of them for all these packages just for, just for the sake of it, really, and to demonstrate partially how to how to build these extra things. Um, right, so let's go to our text browser and go down this tree. So we need to go down to Qt Web Engine, then Qt, and then find libxk be common. It's the easiest way to do this. And right now one thing is I'm not in the directory where uh, I'm not in the sources BLFS directory. So it means these are going to be downloading where I was, which was in my home directory. So because there's only, what is it, looks like one, two, three, four, five packages in total. All I'm going to do is just stay where I am, download them, and then move them into the BF BLFS directory before I extract them. It means it's only five files. Um, it's not too onerous to do that. So let's download, oops, wrong window. See what I said, I've got the cursor over this window, I've pressed enter and it's taken the enter into the 
into the command here so you can see how easy it is to make mistakes um, really need to look at the title bar changes color and the uh, border changes as well to a solid line that helps helps show where the cursor is so right now press enter download nice and quick tiny little library save it go back and I'm gonna copy the first instructions there's no extra configuration no so I copy this move from the root uh, sorry from the home directory lib xkb and move it into here now extract it okay and we can paste in the first command so send the click remember so we can test it with ninja test that's all passed and this is a simple ninja install so that's that package done done so we can get rid of that and we can now move on to Qt5 so these take a little bit of installing these do these bigger packages so I'll have to read these carefully so let's get this downloading in the web browser it'll take a, a while so download yeah it's half a gigabyte it's quite a quite a chunk of data you can see there's a load of optional ones here again I'll be coming back to install these things like pulse audio would definitely be installing So the BLF editors have recommended installing Qt5 in a directory other than user, i.e. opt Qt5 to do this, set the following environment variable. So let's do that. Oh, right, I can't do anything wrong because we're actually downloading. So let's just read what we need to do then. Oh, we need to do this to create a version directory as well. Uh, if QCA has been installed. We haven't installed that yet. And there's a warning if you're reinstalling Qt5 uh, to be careful that it's not in use um, because the libraries, uh, you'll be overwriting libraries that are in use, could cause problems. It says here about some recommended dependencies, do configure dash dash help. The build and build time and space required for a full Qt5 is quite long. The instructions below do not build a tutorial and examples. Removing the no make line will create a complete build. So it's something I won't do at the moment because I just want to get this browser up and running. But when we come to rebuild uh, Qt5, maybe that's something we could include and just get the whole um, the whole caboodle built. Um, so this is what to do if you do want to build into user we're not doing that so we'll just ignore that so these are the commands we put in. we won't be putting in that switch we'll have to remember to remove that because we haven't got half buzz installed yet um, don't think there should be any problem with the rest of it we'll just check the configuration options at the bottom so some more stuff there to do with the Oh yeah, it's a load of configuration. Command explanations, confirm license, open source, no make. So that's the bit which says don't build examples. We've got SQLite installed, so we'll keep that switch. So we could build Qt Web Engine, but the way they do it in BLFS is they build it separately. That's probably because you might want to build Qt, but you don't want the Qt Web Engine. So why would you build the whole lot? The configuration. Oh, this is if you install it in user. 
If Suda is installed, Qt5 does should be available. But if you installed any locator like other than you need to do this. Right, so I'm not sure if that this bit here needs to be done because we will have a QT5 duh. Uh, profile dqt5.sh yeah see this yeah I think we need to do this it's a bit misleading because it says like if you install it in user do this then it says if sudo is installed do this but then it says if you installed it qt5 in a location other than user which you would have thought would be up here or maybe it should say like in any case whether you install it in user or qt5 so I think we'll need to do that, even though QT5 there won't have existed at the moment for us, because we're defining it down here in the profile. So we'll have to remember to to source the profile after we've done these changes. It's not telling us to do that, unfortunately. But uh, if we don't, we won't pick up these uh, changes. Okay, as you can see, it's quite complicated. and We might find it fails. We might need to adjust the switches in the config. So we might have to rebuild it if something fails. Like I say, that X libxkb config, I'm sure that's a file I've had issues with before that you think you don't need it, but you do for, I don't know if it's Qt Web Engine or something else when, when I've been building these browsers. So that, that's why I've built that up front, just that one. Right, so let's fire away. Um, let's save our download. Go back and there's the page with the code ready. The code, the commands we have to type in. And first off, we'll move Qt, far, Qt everywhere into the BLFS directory and we'll extract it. So, as I said, this is quite large, so it'll take a minute or so to extract. Right, so that's extracted, let's change into it. And we can now start putting the commands in. So the first one is to export this Qt5 prefix. So this tells it where we want to install Qt5. Then there's this second bit in the uh, this tip box. And this is just about saying about creating version ones. And this means that you can upgrade Qt5 quite easily. You can just um, follow these instructions again with a new version, new version directory, and all you need to do is just repoint the link, uh, the Qt5 link to the new version, a bit like what we've been doing with Xorg. See, as we've done with Xorg there. Uh, that Q is something, something I've just done. Don't know why that's there. I'll remove that. That shouldn't be there. Maybe I was. Uh, strange. Right. Yeah. So once when I've run this make their own link, you'll see it'll be a similar sort of thing. Uh, sorry, as the root, of course. So 
So now if I list opt, you can see we've done exactly what we've done with Xorg. So if the version of Xorg changes, we just install it or create another directory, say 7.1, and then point this link Xorg at 7.1. Same way we've got Qt5 pointing at Qt5.14.1. If it upgrades to 5.15, you just create the new directory Qt5.15 and modify this link to point at Qt5.15. And another advantage is if you find Qt5.15 doesn't work or doesn't behave in the way you expect, then you can all you need to do is just point the link back at the old version and you've got your old version back so it's quite a powerful mechanism. Right, so now we need to go to the next command. Let's see what we've got. There's these warnings, a bit about checking configure for other options. And we just start with this sed command. So I'm just going to run these separately because there's bits here we've got to take out. So let's just check we've got this Qt5 prefix. We just created it, but it's, it's worth checking. There it is. So we want all of these. Confirm license, open source, dbus link. We've got dbus, that's okay. SSL we've got. So it's the system half buzz we haven't got. So we skip that. We've got SQLite. We don't want the examples this time. I uh, can't remember what it said about no R path, we'll leave that and we want to skip Qt Wave Engine because it's built separately in the BLFS book. So we'll just copy that all up to there. And it's run QMake as part of the configure. Or oh, it's creating a QMake, sorry, I think that's the um, make tool that's used for Qt. So, as you saw, it's doing lots of checking like a config normally does, and it's summarized everything it's going to do, what it found right at the end. So, I'm just scrolling back with shift page up. You can see this configure summary here. So, it's it's um, got stuff about the system we're on, Linux. It's using C, the GNU C, compiler 64 bit, and it knows that the CPU or it can use these features of the CPU. The CPU's actually got more uh, configurations you can see here, but that's what it knows it can use. Um, and then there's all stuff about the build, what sort of standard it's using and so on. Uh, stuff about, again, about the processor, what, what it it's going to take advantage of what it could take advantage of and then it shows all the bits of qt that it's going to build so you can see it's going to build all the all of these qt modules which is probably a good thing and other stuff here about what it's found in the system it's got udev zlib and system z standard we've got apparently it's using something called double double conversion but there's no system double conversion whatever that is I don't know see we've got glib installed we haven't got icon v installed but we've got icu a whole load of other things pcre2 it's fair or oh, oh, it's capable yeah it's using what this means is it's using pcre2 but it's using the inbuilt one because it didn't find a, a system pcre2 and that's because we've installed pcre but not pcre version 2 so when we come to rebuild this, we will have built PCRE2 and that will be a yes. So you might find a few of these options like that where it says you know, it's got something but it's not using the system one. Uh, for example, JPEG, we haven't installed a JPEG library yet. 
so that's why it's going to build it but it's going to use its own internal version and that's why it's not using the system one and again with PNG it's going to build it but because we've put libpng in we've installed that package it's found it in the system so it's going to use a system one and what it means is that it's going to spend a little bit more time compiling because it's got to compile its own versions of libraries it needs if there are more system ones available then obviously we've already built them it doesn't need to build them so the compiler will be a little bit shorter so there's other stuff in there to look at you know like OpenGL it's going to build uh, but not Glaze it hasn't found Glaze by the looks of it which is odd I thought that was I thought that was in uh, I thought that was installed so um, oh actually it has found it here yeah Oh no, CGL, sorry, it's found. So, EGLFS. So it's worth just looking at these just to check to see um, the different things that are going to be built. Just make sure it looks sane. So the CUPS is there. It's not going to be built. We didn't install it, so that's why it's not going to be built. There's a few databases here. <laughs> We haven't got any of these. The only database we've installed so far is SQLite, and it, it's found the system one. It's going to going to use that. Um, we will be installing MySQL or the Mariah or MariaDB one, um, which is like the open source version of MySQL. Um, there's some other things there. See, is that libmng that was an option, and Jasper as well. Oh, it's an image format, right? Okay, so it's not building those because it can't find the libraries it's it's going to build TIFF but we haven't got a TIFF library on the system same with WebP and so on there's a lot of other things it's going to install there it's taking advantage of SSC2 for 3D but not AVX2 There's loads more stuff there, Wayland. So yeah, it's found the Wayland uh, library, the Wayland drivers there. EGL support, Raspberry Pi, it knows we're not on the Raspberry Pi. There's loads of other stuff there to do with Wayland. Bluetooth, we, did, we didn't install the Bluetooth option, so that's why it's not found that. And there's some more stuff there to do with sound. So as I said, there's ALSA libraries and GStream libraries. We haven't installed them, so they're not being used. Pulse Audio again, all this multimedia stuff. So again, that's something when we rebuild this, we'll have all those libraries installed. So it'll be much more fully featured. So I think we're in a position to uh, start building this. I'm going to time this just out of interest to see how long it takes to build and come back in roughly an hour or so oh one thing before i do start this off the screensaver will probably come on so there's some commands to turn the screensaver off uh, i meant to show you this earlier um, there's a command called xset which is for settings for the x windowing system and one there's several ways of doing this. Um, there's one to turn off the DPMS, the um, is it Energy Star? Can't remember what it stands stands for now. Display Panel Mode Selection or something like that. Uh, let's do Accept minus Help. Oh, there it is. Yeah, to control Energy Star DPMS features. So it's minus DPMS to turn it off. So if you do accept by itself. No, is it accept? Oh, status is Q. So if I do accept Q, it will show us what the current settings are for X Windows. You can see there's all stuff about keyboard control here. You can see the number lock is off, the scroll lock is off, the caps lock is off. So if I press caps lock, I've got
got the light come up on the keyboard. If I do exit Q now, you can see it's detected that and it actually says caps lock is on. So it, it's live. Um, screen saver, prefer banking, yes. Allow exposures, yes. Timeout, 600, cycle 600. DPMS is enabled, so if I do minus DPMS, now bring that back. Yeah, DPMS is disabled, so that's okay. And the other thing I want to do is to turn off the blanking. And there's two ways of doing this. I think it's X set. Uh, is it no blank? Uh, S, sorry the screen so prefer blanking no and I think you can do off as well timeout zero cycle zero so you can also actually set the um, timeout so I could do zero zero for a cycle and in theory it should never blank so I'm hoping that's enough settings to not have the screen go blank so you won't be able to see anything compiling so now I've done that I'll run make and come back in about an hour or so and hopefully it's all completed.
Okay, so that's built successfully. So there's no test suite, so all we need to do is make install. Okay, it's installed. So now there's this find command to um, remove some files. So let's become root a bit more permanently. Oh, didn't move my oh my mouse moved back. <laughs> so uh, you can see the problem of having just this mouse hovering over. So I need to go back to Qt5 Right Right, yeah, see my mouse jump back, it's the wire that's it's on, so sudo minus e su Let's paste that command in Then we've got this huge block of configuration to put in Let's copy all that. Okay. This is some packages such as VLC. Look for certain executables with Qt5 suffix. So I run this following command to fix that. It's done, and let's see if there's anything else. Configuration. So, if we installed it in user, we didn't. So, I'm going to do this as I said before. So, that's this one here. So, if we, actually, if we have a quick look at the sudo, as this one sounds etc. So doers dot d. So there's a couple of things in there. And we've got this LDSO conf we need to add because there's different variable uh, different path to the normal USR so LD config needs to be told about the new location and in fact they run it directly afterwards as well so let's copy that to load those uh, libraries the cache and then create an etc profile dqt.sh So that loads stuff. So as I said before, one thing they don't do now is reload the profile. So in, in theory, what we should do now is, because that's the end of the book, uh, the, sorry, the chapter part on building QT, what we should do now is come out and source ETC profile um, and we should have 
several yeah there's the prefix still in this new qt5 dir which is pointing at our opt qt5 and it also means that all these other things will be in the path you see it adds in the bin file to the path and the package config to the package config path so we can check those two so there's the qt5 bin for the executables and we can do echo package config path and you can see it's in there oh sorry where is it there it is there for qt5 so we know this has been loaded um, if we didn't do that it's likely that something would fail either falcon or even possibly qt web engine would fail because it wouldn't be able to find uh, the appropriate libraries and so on so that's finished with qt everywhere we can remove that now remove the directory 